join kids hat family that is not nice tofu what if your friends find out they will stop talking to you won't they oh no i am so clever they won't find out ever let me tell you the story of another clever boy called tom sawyer Sawyer lived with his aunt Polly and half brother Sid. He was an extremely clever boy who loved mischief. But Tom also had a very good luck which always helped him get away with the mischief he did. One day his aunt Polly was looking for him. Tom, Tom, where are you? She looked everywhere. She looked outside in the yard. inside in the house and the kitchen she looked in her room too but he was nowhere she went back to his room and called to him tom stop hiding and come out now but there was no answer suddenly aunt polly saw something move under tom's bed she thought it was tom She bent down and swiftly pulled the bed cover. A cat that Tom had hidden there sprang out at Aunt Polly. Surprised looking at this, she shouted, "Oh dear, where did Tom get the cat? Wait till I find that boy." Just as Aunt Polly was shooing the cat out of the window, she felt someone behind her. It was Tom trying to escape from the room. He had been hiding in the cupboard. Aunt Polly caught him by the collar. "Tom, what were you doing hiding in the cupboard? You ate all the jam, didn't you?" "Uh, no, Aunt Polly. I haven't even touched the jam. It must have been Sid." Don't you lie to me, young man. I can see the jam all over your face. Tom quickly tried to wipe his face, but it was too late. Today I am going to beat you with a stick. You have become too mischievous. Aunt Polly, look behind you. Aunt Polly turned to see, but there was no one. It was just one of Tom's tricks. and this time he used it to get away from aunt polly because when she turned around again he wasn't there oh this boy one of these days i am going to punish him tom was so happy with himself for fooling aunt polly again that he decided to take the day off from school Instead, he went to the river and bathed in it. At lunchtime, he went into a nearby farm, stole fruits from there, and ran out of there with the owner chasing behind him. Just as he was running, he bumped into Sid. 
Sid saw Tom's wet hair and clothes and the fruits in his hands and understood that Tom hadn't gone to school but he didn't say anything. When Tom reached home, Aunt Polly was waiting for him and she was angry. Tom understood that Sid had told her everything. Tom, did you skip school again? Uh, no Aunt Polly, Sid is lying. How did you know Sid said anything to me? Well, for once Tom had got himself into trouble. He had no answer for Aunt Polly's question. Tomorrow is Saturday. You don't have school. You will not go anywhere. Instead, you will whitewash the fence. Uh, the entire fence? Yes, the entire fence. That is your punishment. Tom had no choice. He couldn't argue with Aunt Polly. He didn't want to make her angrier. But he was angry too. The fence would take up his whole Saturday. He went into the yard and kicked at the dust. Just then, he saw Sid coming in. He quickly made a mud ball and swung it at him. Ah! Stop! Help, Aunt Polly! Why did you have to tell anything to Aunt Polly? Tom flung a few more mud balls at Sid and then jumped over the fence and ran away. He knew he was already punished so nothing worse could happen now. Next morning when Tom came down for breakfast he was greeted with a pail of paint and paintbrushes. Aunt Polly had been serious about his punishment. So Tom ate his breakfast and went into the yard to whitewash the fence. Painstakingly, he finished a bit of it. That's when his friend Joe came up to him. Hey Tom, why are you working on a Saturday morning? Working? Who said anything about working? Well, why are you painting the fence then? I am doing it because it is art. Haven't you heard of art, Joe? Well, I have, but I have never done it. Is it fun? Oh yes, it is. Why else would I do it? Joe thought about it. It was true. Tom Sawyer would never do anything that wasn't fun. He asked Tom if he could also try it. Tom agreed to let Joe do only a small portion of it in exchange of three marbles. Joe thought Three marbles was too much, but agreed. He wanted to try art. A little while later, their friend Jim came. He saw Tom resting under the tree and Joe painting the fence. He went to Joe. What are you doing, Joe? It is art. I paid Tom three marbles to let me do it. Three marbles? Uh, is it that good? Yes, very good. Jim dashed to Tom immediately and asked if in exchange of his fish book, he too could whitewash the fence. Tom feigned some reluctance, but agreed. And so it went on.
Other friends of Tom came and believed that painting the fence was fun. They paid Tom in collectors cards, candies and even a catapult to get a chance to paint the fence. By noon, the entire fence was painted and Tom was a rich boy. He hid his treasures and went to his aunt. It's done. What? Unbelievable. Let me see. Aunt Polly took Tom with her to see the fence. Indeed, it was done. And it was done very nicely. How did he do it? Anyway, his punishment is over. Now I will have to let him go. I hope he does not create more mischief. But as always, when Aunt Polly turned around to tell Tom that his punishment was over, he was already gone. The next day was Sunday and Tom went to Sunday school. When he reached there, he saw a new girl and was smitten by her. He desperately wanted to impress her. He thought of a way he could prove himself better than the other boys. He went to one of the smartest boys in the class. And bought from him all his yellow tickets in exchange of the treasure he had earned from his friends yesterday. The yellow tickets were awarded only to those boys who had learned all the verses of the Bible. Usually, only older boys were able to get the yellow tickets. When you had enough yellow tickets, you could exchange them for a Bible. The minister asked the class, Does anyone have enough yellow tickets for a Bible? Nobody had so many tickets. Except Tom, who raised his hand. Everybody, including the minister, was surprised. Tom was the most naughty boy they knew. How could he have learned all the verses of the Bible? The minister understood this was one of Tom's tricks. And he decided to test him. Very well done, Tom. Please come here and collect your Bible. Also, as is tradition, when you earn your Bible, you get to recite any three of your favorite verses from it. Tom was stumped. Three verses? He didn't even know one. He fumbled. Uh, mm, uh, um. The whole class laughed at him as they understood that mischievous Tom had got into a big soup this time. Do you still think you will never get caught? Oh no, Tia. I have to go and tell my friends the truth and apologize to them right away. Look at that girl, Tia. That boy will beat her up easily. I don't think she should get into a fight with him. No, Tofu. The boy was wrong to have stolen her bag. And the girl deserves a chance to get it back. But she is a girl. She can't win against a boy like that. She will get hurt. Just because she is a girl 
doesn't mean she has to fear tofu girls also have a lot of courage and strength do you know of a girl like that yes i do her name is mulan mulan who is she Mulan lived in ancient China with her parents. She was the only child. Her only companion was her dog called Little Brother. Mulan's father used to be a great warrior, but he had hurt his leg in a war and couldn't fight anymore. One day a messenger came from the emperor The Huns China's army had attacked and at least one man from each army had been ordered to join the emperor's imperial army This was terrible news for Mulan and her family as it meant that her father would have to go back to war That night when her parents had slept Mulan had an idea She took her father's sword and cut her hair off then she put on his warrior's uniform and she looked just like a man She took little brother and made her way to the imperial army's campsite There she met Captain Li Shang What is your name? Ping, sir. Very well then. Time to begin your training. Mulan was delighted that everybody had accepted her as a man and started her training. Sadly, she lagged behind all the other warriors. You are not fit to be in my army. You are slowing everyone down. Go back to your village. Returning to her village would have brought great shame to her family. So Mulan came up with another plan. She wrote a fake letter to the army saying that the Huns have attacked. Reading the letter, Li Shang ordered his army, "Onward with me. March to the mountains. We shall defeat the Huns forever." As the army was crossing the pass that led to the mountains, they found themselves surrounded by thousands of Huns. We've been cheated. The Huns were supposed to be in the mountains. Soon the entire imperial army was under attack. Mulan had another idea. She took the last cannon and let it. There was a huge blast which destroyed most of the Huns. but it injured Mulan too She was rushed to the doctor's tent Bring Ping to this bed I will take care of him But there was a surprise waiting for the doctor
Oh my god! Ping is a woman! Get me Captain Li Shang immediately! The doctor told the captain what she'd found. Few days later, when the army started moving, Shang spoke to Mulan. You have cheated me. But you also saved the army in the passes. Hence your punishment is that you can no longer be a part of the army. You will not come with us. Mulan was very upset and heartbroken. She needed to do something to save her family's honour. That's when she heard the Huns' voices. Oh no! The Huns are still alive! I must warn the captain! And so Mulan raced to Imperial City to warn Shang. They are alive! We must prepare for another attack from the Huns! I cannot trust you anymore. You have cheated me before. You are not welcome here. Leave. Mulan tried to inform the other leaders but no one would listen to her. Meanwhile, the Hun leader, Shan Yu, attacked the city. kidnapped the Emperor. Li Shang and Mulan freed the Emperor. Mulan then enticed Shan Yu to follow her to the rooftop. There she tricked him and grabbed his sword and pinned his coat to the roof. As the two armies collided, there was a huge explosion and the roof was destroyed, taking with it Shan Yu. Mulan fell to the ground. When she sat up, she saw that the Imperial Army had won and the Huns had been banished from the city forever. The Emperor was very happy with Mulan's bravery and gifted her a sword as a token of appreciation. Mulan went home and presented the sword to her father who was very happy with the honour that his daughter had brought to the family. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. It was Captain Li Shang. He'd come to return Mulan her helmet that she had forgotten. Mulan invited him to stay for dinner and he graciously accepted. So you see, Tofu, girls can do anything they put their heart to. Tofu? Tofu, are you listening to me? Yes, dear, I am. I am just thinking how wrong I was to think that girls can't fight. <laughs> well, now you know. So better be careful before you pick a fight with a girl next time. Whoa, that was odd, wasn't it, dear? 
Yes, it reminds me of Henry, the ghost of the Warren family house. Oh, what is Henry's story? Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful family of the Warrens. Jim and Alice and their two children, Penny and Rick. They had just moved into the new house. Penny and Rick loved the new house. Look Rick, I can see till the lake from my bedroom window. That's awesome, Penny. Come and see from my window. I can see our garden. I am glad you love your rooms, children. Maybe you can tie a swing for them on the large tree, Jim. The children were excited by the mom's suggestion. They quickly went to the garden and helped their dad tie the swing for them. Later, they came back into the house, had a lovely supper and everybody went to sleep. It must have been a few hours into the night when Rick was awakened by a noise in the garden. He looked out of the window. It was the swing and someone was on it. Who is there? Hearing the sound, whoever was on the swing quickly got off and ran away. Rick also went back into his bed and fell asleep. The next morning, the Warrens gathered for breakfast. I saw someone on the swing last night. I couldn't see clearly in the dark, but it was someone shot. What? That's not possible, honey. I'm sure it was the wind playing tricks with you. Oh, mother, it is possible. I did see someone last night. The day wore on and everybody forgot about the person on the swing. Rick and Penny were playing in their room. When Penny called, Hey Rick, look, there's someone on the lake. But there was no one that Rick could see. The next morning, the children told their parents about what they saw on the lake. And their parents dismissed their fears yet again. A few days passed. The children kept seeing odd shapes and their parents kept refusing them. One day, Penny found that her maths homework book was missing. Soon Rick found that his favorite cricket bat was missing. But mom, dad, you have to believe us. The grown-ups were about to disagree with Rick and Penny again when suddenly Mrs. Warren's two walk came flying at them. Everybody ducked. Looks like the children were right. There is a ghost in this house. Yes, there is. We must figure out what the ghost wants. 
and so everybody decided to talk to the ghost. They waited in Penny's room at night, hoping that the ghost will come to take more of her books. And right as they were, the ghost came and went to Penny's desk. Hello, Mr. Ghost. Oh, hello there. Everybody was shocked. The ghost was no more than a boy. How can we help you? Help me? Really? Yes, we would love to. That would be nice. I am stuck here like a ghost because I died before my last wish was not fulfilled. Really? Tell us please, how can we help? My name is Henry. I was a very good student and I loved math. In the last week of my life, I had written a maths exam. I knew I would top the class, but before the teacher could declare my results, I died. I want to make my mother proud of me. I wish the teacher would check my test paper and she still keeps in her desk and tells my mother the score. As Jim and Alice watched Henry's ghost go out of the window, they decided to help him out. The next morning they inquired about Henry's school and teacher. Once they had found her, they went to her and requested her to please check his paper. Just as Henry had said, he scored the highest in class. Next, we must find Henry's mother. Let us talk to the principal. And so the Warrens got Henry's mother's address from the principal. They set off towards this address. They found Henry's mom and explained their case to her. Is my Henry all right? Yes, ma'am. And he loves doing math. And he wanted you to have this. My son Henry, he stood fast in class again. I am so happy. Suddenly, Henry appeared in front of her mother. Mother, I am so happy to see you. I get my promise, Mom. I came first in class. All I wanted was for you to know that I came first. I feel free to go now. Henry, my son, I will always be proud of you. Jim, Alice, Rick and Penny. I will never forget this. Thank you so, so much. As everyone watched, Henry turned into a bright light and vanished. The Warrens returned to their home, never to be disturbed by any ghosts again. Wow, dear! I never knew that there can be some good ghosts too. Well, Tofu, like there are good people and bad people in this world, there are good and bad ghosts too. You know, I have decided what I want to become for Halloween this week. Let me guess. Henry? Perhaps.
Absolutely. How did you know, Tia? I just did. Now come on. Let's go home before the cold wind comes back. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.